All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Sarah from Curie. Thanks for joining. For people who don't know, what does your company do? Curie is an aluminum-free deodorant. Um, that is our first, very first product and our hero product, but we've since expanded into body care. So we are now a clean body care company with scent really being the core experience. And you've been on Chartang. We'll get into that later, but let's talk about this. So for me, the reason I want to talk to you, uh, several reasons, but I've never had a natural deodorant, any product that I actually liked or that lasted more than I would say maybe three days. And so what problem did you see in the market and what did you figure out? What was what were people missing? And you just put our product on. So I'm I just did. pretty excited to right do now. a little sniff test at the yeah, end at of the this end. episode. And I'm so vulnerable. You know, <laughs> see, see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but I had the same problem as you. I This was back in 2017, 2016, 2017. I was trying to make the switch to cleaner products. This is when, you know, Goop was started, Beauty Counter started, this clean movement started to pick up steam in 2016, 2017, around the time when people realized, hey, you know, I'm spending all this money on organic groceries and paying attention to what I'm putting in my body. But your skin is your biggest organ, and what you put on your skin actually does make its way into your bloodstream. Okay. I don't think a lot of people realize that. I definitely didn't until I read an article about it, and I decided that I was going to start making the switch to cleaner, more natural products, especially the products that I use on my skin every day, like deodorant. So went to Whole Foods, picked up a bunch of different clean products with natural ingredients, started using them, started incorporating them into my routine. And deodorant was the one thing that I could not. I, I think I bought every aluminum free natural deodorant on the shelf. None of them worked for me. Even like by noon, I stunk. The worst part is you think you're the problem. You're like, why am I? Yeah, because exactly. you're like, no one would make a product. Yeah, that I kind of like kept you. it to myself. I didn't tell anyone. I was like, what is what's wrong with me? Am I, I just a really time, smelly person? Right. But is it me? Is it, is I it my diet? I started to talk about it and talking to friends, talking to colleagues, even, you know, look at, I remember Kim Kardashian was on the Kardashians talking about how aluminum free deodorants don't work. So I realized talking to friends and peers that this was a problem for other people as well. There was this, you know, idea that it's aluminum free deodorants, they just don't work. And so I kept going back to the antiperspirants. I couldn't find anything that worked for me and I wasn't willing to make a sacrifice. And around that time, I decided to take matters into my own hands, did some Googling, found, I have a lot of networking, a lot of conversations, found some formulators that were actually based in LA, which is where I was living at the time, started working with them. And the goal was, hey guys, let's try to make an aluminum free deodorant that actually works. Like focus on performance, this product has to work. And if it can work on me, then I'm going to create a business out of it. Yeah. We worked on our first formula for about a year. And once we got it right. What was the I, hard part? Like what is the thing that if you could condense it into just the average listener listening, they might not know the science, but what are all the other brands not doing? I, I mean, it really comes down to the ingredients, of yeah. course. And we iterated on our formula. That first formula, I think we went through 23 or 24 different iterations of it. Small little tweaks to the actual formula. Obviously, it comes down to the ingredients, even s different sourcing um, for different ingredients. Not all ingredients are made the same. We made, we went through dozens and dozens of iterations on the formula. And since then, we've reformulated three or four times. So it has been a work in progress. It really does, like I said, come down to the ingredients and the science behind it, which is finding that right combination that for us has been, you know, the moisture absorbing ingredients, the odor neutralizing ingredients, the base is super important. What waxes, what oils you use, how they adhere to the skin, your pH of your skin and how that works with the pH of the product. There's actually a lot, a lot of, of science. science that goes okay. into deodorant. Part of the reason we called it Curie. Yeah. What does that mean? What does Curie it's mean? It's named after Marie Curie, who was a famous physicist and chemist from the 1800s. Wow. I actually did a book report on her in fifth grade. I st and she stuck with me because she story. was a trailblazer. She was, you know, 1800s women were not even getting an education. And she was a PhD, ran her own lab, made some discoveries that led to chemotherapy x-rays, some really groundbreaking scientific discoveries. First woman to win the Nobel Prize, only person ever to win it twice in two different sciences. And to me, she just represented, you know, not only was there a lot of science that went into 
all of our formulas, but also she just represented that woman, that person that I was building the brand for, which is the trailblazers and That's the so go-getters. Cool. Was there like an aha moment when you were like, okay, what are we going to name it? And then you thought of this book report. That's, inc- that's an incredible story. Well, actually, there's <laughs> even more to it. Trademark is something that I highly recommend any aspiring entrepreneurs look into before they decide on a something. name and yeah. especially before they print packaging because we <laughs> had about this is four a pro names. Tip. Pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> Definitely you know, hire that trademark lawyer before you commit to anything because we had three or four names that I had was in love with one of them we had printed packaging for and tell then us? hired a lawyer and they're like yeah you can't use that name sorry like, you were like the los angeles deodorant club <laughs> <laughs> what, what were the names i actually it's a blessing in disguise because <laughs> now i really don't like the name yeah. that this was the name that i actually had packaging printed at one point and then the lawyer was like sorry i think like abercrombie and fitch owns the trademark or something and we couldn't do it but it was cheeky it was going to be cheeky deodorant Hindsight's yeah. 2020. Like Very grateful. I think I, I didn't realize I initially I was building Curie for women and women were our first thousand customers were all women. And over the last few years, especially with our partnership with Equinox, we have a large male um, customer base. I think we're about 40 percent male customers at this point. So cheeky doesn't quite, nice. uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't work, work for men as it's, well as it does. When you work. first launched, what was your first pro or line? Like how many different versions of the deodorant did you? have so when we first launched we were fully bootstrapped i started curie with twelve thousand dollars of my savings i even i think i sold all my crypto <laughs> for our first production run uh, before the was, winter storm so I that's know, good i, I know. hope <laughs> I, hope. <laughs> I mean bitcoin had a good run if you got in early enough yeah yeah i got in early and i sold that i good sold it and started my own company with it but uh twelve thousand dollars of my savings went into our first production run i started with just one cent uh, uh, because we were bootstrapped. Some advice I got early on that I really took to heart and I'm so grateful for, it was Mike, the founder of Soma Water. I had known him through a mutual connection and he was like, treat the first six months like a beta, like a pilot. And uh, do not spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on, you know, the fanciest, nicest, like branding and design agency. Like don't spend $50,000 on a website. Like don't go all in and commit because you're going to want to change everything after those first six months. So I really took that to heart. I built my own website. I even designed our first, this is not our, the, I didn't design this. <laughs> yeah. Our first packaging, I designed it, took a Adobe Illustrator course and on YouTube or something and created our packaging myself. So it was very grassroots, very bootstrapped, humble origins. And we started with our white tea. It was our very first scent. Okay. And is that your bestseller to date or no? It is not. Okay. No, white tea is no longer our bestseller, but I also like to think I have a good nose for fragrance. And that was really important to me in creating the product. I didn't want to just create, you know, I felt like a lot of the natural deodorants, like scent was an afterthought. They'd be like, hey, here we go. Let's throw some lavender oil in it and call it a day. Yeah, I you wanted, see that a lot. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, no, I want this to feel Again, at the time I was building for women, I was like, I want it to feel like something that, oh, you get a whiff of it throughout your day. And it, it's, you know, my hair products smell great. Like I want my deodorant to smell great too. And if some, if I give, I give someone a hug, I want them to like what they smell. And so I worked with a scent house almost as long as I did on the deodorant on the fragrance and landed on this delicious white tea fragrance. It was subtle. It, I felt like it was something that could appeal to everybody. It, people say it smells like a spa. It's very it's not a bad soft. Thing. It's, yeah. it's just compliments any scent, even if you're wearing like a powerful perfume it smells really nice alongside other fragrances. So that's how we created that first fragrance, our white tea. And that has really, the popularity of the scent. Again, I treated those first six months like a, like a pilot. And that popularity of the scent itself, not only did people love the deodorant, they loved the fragrance. And that really was what we used to, you know, catapult to the business to where it is today. At what point did you know you were onto something? Like there's so many different, obviously you go to your friends and family first, you get some feedback, but at what point do you go, okay, wow, like this is much bigger than I originally thought maybe, or, oh, this, this works, this can work. It's hard to say that because I think there were many moments. There's little, a bunch of little moments for a sure. Bunch, a bunch of little moments. You know, I worked in venture capital 
before I started Curie. So I had known, you know, what to look for. What does product market fit look like? That was literally my job. So I had a really good, I think, instinct around, hey, is this working? And you know, that those thousand raving customers is something you hear all the time. And yeah. that was really what I was looking for at the beginning was like, I need a thousand raving customers that aren't my mom and her friends. You know, our first hundred or 200 customers were friends and cousins and right. coworkers and you all that. You recognize the name on the yeah, order sheet. Yeah, yeah. and they yeah. were like, five stars, best deodorant ever. I'm like, all right, I don't care about your guys' opinion. I want strangers to be writing five-star reviews and strangers to be repurchasing. And at that point, you know, I, I can't remember what the time frame was. I will say it did take longer than I thought it would. Yeah. Building a business was harder than I thought it would be, especially bootstrapped. I didn't, I couldn't just go buy Facebook ads. Like I really had to get scrappy and creative. And what year was this? This was, we launched in early 2019. And so this was, you know, the the heyday of Facebook ads where you could buy, you know, those a days, customer yeah. for a dollar fifty or whatever. Where it's kind, it was getting way more expensive around that time. I also didn't know what I was doing with Facebook ads. So I just leaned into what I knew well, which was organic social media. I was the face of the brand. I was constantly posting on social. 2019 was also the time where you could still get organic views on Instagram. Yeah, it's so really hard these days, but that was really what I leaned in on. And then also I just fired off emails to journalists, got a lot of placements, just organic placements and in, in publications and websites and stuff like that alongside, you know, friends and family, encouraging people to tell their friends about it and their friends of friends. You're saying a lot of pro tips there that I want to unpack for people. So I remember when I first started, I had a company once and it was at the time, just timing wise, it was 2012, but you could literally like the the Facebook advertising, you, it was insane. I could target you basically specifically. I was like, I know I I saw this person, I went to high school with them and I know that they're going to buy this product because something, and I could target them Yeah. or, and then I could target people like them. It was wild. It was so wild it how it used so, to be. It, I mean, it was even like that in 2019. I just didn't know how to use it. And I, I don't think, when I look back on it, I'm like, what What a missed opportunity. That's so, how I feel about 2019 yeah. because, you know, no, it's today incredible. it's even more expensive. But I'm like, damn, I wish yeah. I kind of wish I had just brought on. So brought for entrepreneurs today, it's, it's almost like the tools of today are moving so quickly that it's catch it, like just catch it. And it 100%. might not feel, it are, maybe it feels like you're behind, but you're not like catch it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'll never forget that. And it like haunts me sometimes being like, yeah. I wish we spent more, you know, that's how it goes. The, yeah. the politicians take it. That's why I always take advice ser- seriously from founders that are in it right now. Yeah. Like if you are running a brand right now, that is the type of person that I want to get advice from. It's actually sometimes not super helpful to get advice from someone who, you know, ran and sold a business five years ago or 10 years ago because the landscape changes every year. So it's really tough to take that advice from someone who was running a brand in 2013 or 2014. And their advice would be like, just, you know, the Facebook machine, you put $1 in, you get 10 <laughs> out, like easy. <laughs> yeah. For me, it'd be like, get a big cartel website that they don't, the big cartel doesn't exist anymore. Shopify took them over. And so there's so many things where it's like, even yeah. the tools I would mention are yeah. useless today. Yeah. And that was not that long ago. At what point did you decide or think mm-hmm. about applying to Shark Tank or did they they approach you? So a very pervasive theme around me and my business and the journey and all that has been, I basically have gotten rejected. Every wonderful thing that has happened in my business in the last few years has started out with a no, like everything, including Shark Tank. So I applied to Shark Tank once, maybe even twice before I actually got on the show. So I applied. What's your takeaway there though on the rejection? Do you feel like, like, have you made it so in your head that's normal now? Like oh, you yeah. expect it, right? I expect it. Totally. And, and at the, you know, back the in. The world will never give you what you want. Back in 2019, it 2020, it would crush me. Like a no would absolutely crush me. And when I say that every great thing has started with a no, I'm not exaggerating. Like Shark Tank, QVC, Walmart. Like Nordstrom, like every every great partnership, retail, all that. Even the deal on Shark Tank started with a no. Even we'll the get deal, on deal on Shark Tank. So, but <laughs> I did apply to Shark Tank, I think two years. And then the second time I got a call back and I got pretty far in the process and then I got cut. 
And then I finally applied again in what was that, 2021, got on the show, made it all the way through. But the whole time I was like, this isn't going to happen because I had already <laughs> During gone your pitch, you, you, you mentioned you were hiking. Yeah. So Griffith what happened was I finally got on the show after trying for years, finally get on the show the night before I was, so I was living in LA at the time and it's filmed in LA. The night before I was supposed to go film, you know, my whole set was there at the sound stage. I had my outfit picked out, laid on on my bed, ready to wake up at 5 a.m. to be there by call time the next morning on Monday. I get a call on Sunday night at like 6 p.m. from the producers saying that I was removed from the schedule. Oh my God. And oh, also, we're not sure if we're gonna be able to get you on the schedule again, but we'll try our hardest. And I was devastated. Oh my God. That's not common, by the way. It is not common, no. Um, The producers are wonderful. I'm still friends with my producer. Like it was not her fault. Who was that? Was that Mindy? Uh, No, my producer was Kelly. Kelly. Okay. And she, Mindy is the casting director. The casting, sorry. Yeah. So the Shark Tank team is wonderful. They, it is TV though. And they, it's, it's really tight scheduling. There was a storm on the East coast and they were like, Hey, Sarah's in LA. We can get her in anytime. Like let's, let's bump her from the schedule, put her on the standby list. And long story short, I didn't get a call back. We're so sorry. We don't have time in this filming block for you. Please come pick up all your set items. Please keep them in case we have time in the next filming block, which was two months away. So my garage was full of like giant Shark Tank posters that basically like mocked me every day when I'd walk in there and be Mm. like, what could have been? And then two months later, I kind of forgot about it. Like I I didn't think it was ever going to happen. Did you buy extra inventory? Just, oh yeah, okay. bought extra inventory. So, but yeah. silver lining is we started to do really well on QVC during that time. I think I went on air five times and sold out every time. So we were doing, re- the business was growing and doing really well. And I got to the place where, the point where I was like, all right, I don't need this. This would be a nice to have. It's not a need to have. We'll be okay without it. And then, you know, two weeks later, they're like, hey, second filming window is starting. Please be on standby by your phone in case we have time. And I'm like, uh-huh, sure. Like, no way that's happening. Oh, my God. The last day of the filming window, they <laughs> called me. I was, you know, I didn't think I was going to get a call. So I went out the night before. It was a friend's going away party. I was hungover. I drank, like, margaritas the night before. And I was hiking with some friends at Griffith Park. And I got the call from my producer, like, literally at the top of the mountain. And she was like, if you can be here in two hours, you can film. (laughs) (laughs) And bless my husband, because I said no. I was like, there's no way. I mean, I I haven't, my hair is dirty. Like, there's (laughs) no way I'm going to be able to be film ready and at the studio in two hours. So I was like, I'm sorry, there's no way. And my husband was like, you had to call them back right now. Like, we are going to make this work. And so... We flew home. I didn't even shower. I just used some like dry shampoo and our deodorant spray and did my makeup in the passenger seat of the car and literally went from the car to pitching on Shark Tank within a matter of 30 minutes. It was That's crazy. Unbelievable. And it such a good crazy. story. Yeah. I mean, it really, really. That's so crazy. I think, you know, silver lining of all of it. One, I didn't have time to get nervous, right. which was great. I walked in there like on just adrenaline pumping so full of energy and confidence and i think that's why i did so well i didn't have time to get in my head or nervous like i didn't even practice my pitch in two months and i did you want somebody when when, so when you when you see the sharks there are you thinking it's Lori or you what what, like who did you want to target so it's actually i don't even think i've admitted this publicly but i did go in wanting Lori. of course i loved barbara as well i'd followed her on social media and i thought she was just just I I felt like we were birds of a feather like in now that I actually get to work with her it's like she is incredible I'm so happy that I got Barbara but Lori was who I went in thinking I was gonna get because again the QVC experience I was like no-brainer but she was one of the first ones out so that didn't happen and I when once she went out I was like I'm not getting a deal so there's two things that I remember about your episode that I enjoy the most one it's like really your 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 tenacity to go after them like there's a I, I, and I like it, it's a master class people that I think would normally get up on stage and be really afraid or just honored to be in the room with these individuals 
you're basically like counter me. Like, give me, you know, you you go in on them. People on YouTube. And it's so good. There's lots of comments on the YouTube video. And one of them that's people say a lot is like, you, you out sharked the sharks. Yeah. Like Mark looked nervous Mark at the did beginning. Look <laughs> Because he you're you're like well get, yeah and and it's so, and he won't he's so afraid to say no to you he doesn't want to say no to you he likes you he likes your yeah. story he likes your arc so for anyone listening that hasn't seen the episode again this is along with my theme of everything starts with a no I got on the uh, into the Shark Tank and you know pitched my little heart out I think I did really well again I was just really full of energy and adrenaline and confidence and at one point all the sharks went out and. They were all out, and, oh, except for Damon. Right, he's trying to make a deal with you. Damon, oddly enough, he's makes a terrible deal with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, or tries to, you know, he's gives trying me to rob a you. Terrible deal. <laughs> yeah, I think he kind of maybe felt sorry for me, <laughs> and so he just gave me this deal, like a very lowball deal. And so as I'm negotiating with Damon, I'm trying to negotiate with him, and I go, "Listen, Damon, like." nobody that has set foot on this carpet has more, you know, tenacity than I do. Like I just came from a hike. Like I will not quit. Like I, you know, giving all these examples, you know, during COVID I was up till 3 a.m. talking to manufacturers, suppliers, like I will not quit. And that is the difference between me and, you know, other entrepreneurs. And I'm giving this like, it was better on the show. I can't really even remember what I said. No, it was great. But it worked. It worked. Because I see out of the corner of my eye, Mark yeah. Cuban and Barbara Corcoran, wh Corcoran whispering. And I'm like, okay, keep going, keep going. I kept it going. And then next thing I know, they interrupted. You resurrected it. You resurrected it from nothing. I resurrected it. And yeah. they both offered me a deal. And when I tell you how shocked I was, like, I cannot. It's shocking to watch put into words the way yeah. I felt in that moment. It was incredible. One of the top 10 experiences of my life. I mean, I, and I get it because they're looking at you outside of your product. They're just like, she's an amazing entrepreneur, period. And so you, you want to back that. You want to back that horse. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what it came across. Yeah. And I think they were like, it doesn't matter what she's doing. And it's and very rare. And that's what rare. Mark said. He's, he said, you know, I don't, I don't really care what she's selling. I want to invest in her, yeah. which was really a very flattering thing to say. And, and I, it worked out after? Um, yeah, so after the show, we ended up renegotiating things a bit. And through that renegotiation, Mark went out and Barbara stayed in. So we ended up closing the deal with Barbara. And she is fantastic. Yeah. Like, I have nothing but wonderful things to say about Barbara. She is so hands-on. She is so all-in on her Shark Tank investments. And she sold her business, Cor Corcoran Group, a while ago. So she's just, she has time and is really invested in her Shark Tank companies and really like puts her money and effort where her mouth is and uh, shows up for us. So. What's your favorite part about her or working with her? Oh my God. I am like president of the Barbara Corcoran fan club. Like I want to be like You're her like the when cousin's I grow name up. Lobster yes, guys. I love her so much and I think you know obviously she's smart like I really love brainstorming with her but what I love about her as a person is like she has such strong values and like her the things that she prioritizes like that is what her life is all about so she loves to have fun like she loves having fun she loves connecting with people and that is what her life how she lives her life. It's all about creating fun and connection with people. And she brought us all out for her like annual summit that she does with, I think she chooses 15 portfolio companies for Shark Tank companies and brings them to different places and does a little three day summit. And I got to go to the, the one last year. And that is who Barbara is. Like she got a party bus with a keg and she was dancing. Like she is like a fun, fun person. And that's the way she chooses to live her life. And I love that. When you yeah. compare, so based on your QVC experience, when you compare that to the Shark Tank bump, are they comparable? QVC versus Shark Tank? Yeah. No. No. Which one's better? <laughs> Shark Tank. Yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. By I like mean, a... QVC, we, we do very well on QVC and it, I go on again and again and again and again. So overall, if you were to compare, probably QVC, but that Shark Tank effect is real. And I think it depends on the company. You know, I've talked to, I talk to companies all the time. I try to pay it forward because I reached out to a bunch of Shark Tank alums before I went on for advice and they talked to me. So now anytime someone DMs me or reaches out, I, I will hop on a call and 
give them my advice. And sometimes those people come back and they're like, hey, it was kind of a disappointment. And sometimes they're like, oh my God, we're sold. We're going to be sold out for a year. (laughs) So it definitely depends on the business. I think Curie, I think the episode was great and really inspired people and entertained people. Also, Barbara sniffed my armpit at the end and said it smelled great. And so that definitely helped. But I think just the the hike. Yeah, I think just the, and after being in the shark tank for an hour, but I think just the nature of my products and how, how, you know, everyone wears deodorant. So we did really, really well after a shark tank, but I don't think that's the norm. When you think about the category, do you think like it's changed in the sense of, so this is basically the first one I've used since I had a bad experience, which I could probably say was three, four years ago. It was a while ago where I just bought all of them. Later. I'll tell you happily. (laughs) Do you feel like that's a big challenge in terms of the marketing or has that gone away? Are you asking if it's a big challenge to like change people's perception? Yeah, perception change people's the, perception of perception. what? Yeah, I think that is, it, it depends. Most people that are trying Curie have tried another aluminum free deodorant before. Um, so my, you know, read on it is if you're, if you're buying Curie and you've tried an aluminum free deodorant that didn't work for you before, like you have some hope. <laughs> that's true but that's true um, yeah I they're already in the market switching call it yeah yeah okay. it's just hard for us to measure i mean i'm sure there's people out there that try a few and then write it off completely but most of our customers come to us after trying in another brand it didn't work for them they saw an ad or they saw us on shark tank or qvc or you know that's why our fitness studio partnerships are so huge for us soul cycle because, yeah we're so our spray deodorant which is right there that is in all Equinox clubs worldwide, available to use for free in the locker rooms, as well as all Soul Cycle clubs and or Soul Cycle studios, and also you know a couple hundred other independent boutique fitness studios. So by offering that as a free amenity, and then you know there's a QR code on the back, or at Equinox you can go buy it right then and there at the Equinox club stores. That's a really great um, opportunity for us to you know allow people to sample the product and yeah. fall in love with it. And that's pretty learn smart. that it actually works before they buy it. Yeah, that's really smart. Where else can people find you? Where are the stores? So, and you're launching vanilla. Let's talk about the vanilla product. Yeah. So direct to consumer, we just launched on Amazon in December. So you can now find us on Amazon. We've been selling out. So no guarantees, but if you can find it on Amazon, that's a great place to grab it. And then we launched at Walmart, all 4,000 doors um, oh, wow. last year. So Huge. Thank you for. And how much is it? for people who are looking to buy the product each product product. okay the deodorant stick is 14 the deodorant spray is 16 our armpit detox mask which is a bestseller especially for people who are making the switch to aluminum free for the first time the armpit detox mask retails for 16 and this is definitely a must if you are new to aluminum free deodorant what it's designed to do is it has kaolin clay Um, bentonite clay activated charcoal you use it literally on your underarms like you would a face mask for your you know a clay mask for your face use it on your armpits these ingredients help draw out impurities help basically draw out those heavy metals that aluminum that's been clogging your sweat glands for years and years and helps you start fresh clean slate with your new aluminum free deodorant what's on the agenda for 2024 for you so you're launching a bunch of locations and so are you raising capital are you making new products new lines of products what's the thing that keeps you um, up at night now so we're a profitable business um, Congratulations! so thank That's you huge. so no plans to fundraise as of yet but of course that could change right now we're in four thousand retail doors well 4,200 if you, we're also in a couple of smaller retailers. My goals for 2024 is double our retail footprint, which would probably mean getting another big, big box retailer. And then also launching some new fragrances. We just launched the warm vanilla today. Uh, you're one of the first people to sniff it. It's delicious. Uh, so we have a couple more. They're all great, by the way. Yes. They all smell really, really nice. So we work with Anne Gottlieb on our fragrances. This is like our secret sauce. Uh, Anne Gottlieb is, if you're not in the industry, she is a scent connoisseur. She's like the nose of CPG is what Wall Street Journal calls her. <laughs> that's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> she cre- she's, you know, been around for decades. She created Axe Body Spray, Bath, all of Bath and Body Works fragrances, Dove. So she's done like, you know, those CPG big box brands, but then she's also done high-end Jacobs, Estee Lauder, like all these high-end perf- perfumes and fragrances. So basically everything 
from high market to low market, she has created fragrance for, and she really, really knows that mass consumer. And we brought her on two years ago to help us with our fragrances because, again, we learned that people loved the fragrance so much that we decided to make that a you know big part of the experience with Curie and let's make these delicious fragrances that people want to use on their whole body and then we can create a whole body line around it and really scent being that core experience so our first Ann Gottlieb fragrance was the coconut which is our the coconut nectar is our bestseller her second fragrance with us is warm vanilla which we think will be a bestseller as well. So we're coming out with a few more Ann Gottlieb fragrances this year, and then also expanding the body line. And we've started to expand beyond body care, and that's going really well. We have our dry shampoo, our body wash, our body oil. So we're coming out with one or two more body care products this year. And they can use Startup 20 for 20% off, yes, right? Yes, you can use Startup 20 for 20% off Curie products on our website. That's a fun one for the listeners. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming yeah. on the podcast and thank sharing your you. story. This is really fun. Great questions. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.